Uh, let's see if I can find a good Lower Kara to talk about. Now, keep in mind, Lower Kara has been nerfed a lot. Oh, 13 hours. We definitely play Lower Kara here, right? This will be a review slash play along slash look at mistakes and talk about stuff of Lower Kara. We just did Upper Kara. Um, the first thing you notice, just like Upper Kara, there's a really weird, annoying ghost at the start. And you can skip this either with a Rogue Distract, with Fade, uh, Invis Belt. Generally speaking, that mob isn't great to pull. In a pug, you can just like, uh, you know, single target that guy or whatever, but it's definitely not good for time. We've done a lot of routes here. So one thing to note in Legion, if you are familiar with this dungeon, these ghostly philanthropists hurt really, really bad to the tank. Or rather, they used to. Now, they don't anymore. Their big tank hit has been removed, so these mobs are actually great to pull in mass. And you can actually grab even more mobs to the right, uh, a tank that I played with even this morning did. Another pack with this. You can see how little tank damage they do. The one thing they do is they have this pennies from heaven thing, and you can actually just interrupt that because that's all the mobs do. That's the only thing the mobs do. Uh, this is Sanguine, so we're going to be struggling a lot with Sanguine. I'm not going to talk too much about Sanguine because Sanguine's hard. So we do, a, we do a pull here. I think generally speaking, all this stuff is really, really juicy count. Uh, after you get out of this hallway, there is the first boss, the Opera Hall. Technically, you can do any bosses in any order, so if I refer to a boss as a number, uh, that might not help you too much. So what happens here is Zyro, our mage, runs ahead, or maybe I do it. One of us runs ahead and starts the RP. The Opera RP takes a very long time. It's like almost a full minute. So while you're fighting this pack right here, right before the Opera, you want to have somebody run down and start it. Usually, I try to as a healer, um, it can be a little scary. You can actually just fade all the way through this hallway, by the way. You can fade all the way through the hallway. You don't need an invis pot or anything as a priest. You can fade all the way through and just start the RP. I think maybe your tank needs to pull the very first pack like by the stairs. But you can see that Zyro's gone. It looks like Zyro's starting the RP in this one. We were a little worried about Sanguine and other stuff going on. This boss is a three-week rotation, so it's not always the same boss. It's also different in NA and EU, so whenever you're watching a stream and you're wondering what the heck, uh, I don't even remember what boss this was. This was Beautiful Beast. Okay, so I'm going to try and go over the mechanics quickly, just because there's so many of these bosses and it's like whatever. Uh, the strategy we use is we save Lust. We did not Lust on pull. We focus down the broom. The broom is the very annoying part of the fight because it forces you to run around and uh, it stops your damage. It's annoying and it's kind of dangerous. If the broom is fixating you, you just want to run away. You do, not, you do not want to run the broom through the fire. If you do that, see how the broom just zoomed to me? This is because I'm a healer and I don't, a healer movement. And so I ran the broom through the fire and it just zoomed over and killed me. Very bad to do that. Okay, now after the broom is dead, we kill Luminor. So now Burning Blaze puts a fire on the ground and Mrs. Cauldrons shoots a soup spray that just does damage. However, if you get hit by the soup spray, you can remove these fire puddles. And we're getting blasted right now. Uh, so Zyro gets hit by... The, oh no, I get hit by the soup spray and I run and clear that puddle. So that's, that's why I'm doing that. So whenever... If you ever see one of these soup spray casts get off and it goes on you, then run around and clear a couple puddles. I think you have like six seconds to do it. Um, I think I get one more here. So I feather myself and... Uh, Okay, well, my team is dying for some reason, so I don't know what's happening. Notice we still haven't lusted. Uh, once that guy, once the, uh, the blazing guy goes down, now it's pretty easy. Uh, you just kill Mrs. Cauldrons. This is where you want to start saving your cooldowns, because there's not really much going on here. You want to save your cooldowns and you save your lust for the very last part. This part's very scary. Do not pop your cooldowns when you kill the third one. After that, there's like a weird RP here, so do not waste anything here. So this is the scary part. These are the forks. The forks will absolutely truck anybody who's near them, whether it's your tank or the melee DPS. You want to AoE. This is a full AoE, full blast pad fight. You do not want to focus damage on the big guy. These forks hurt very, very badly. Since then, they've been nerfed. However, I still think once you get to an appropriate key level that you're doing in the other dungeons, they will still keep hurting again. You can see just one stack of the fork is... <laughs> Like, dude, these forks are absolutely insane. The, the forks do an unreal amount of damage. And we have a prop paladin who can bop, bubble, Kyrian, dwarf. Like, these bleed. <laughs> Look at his health! 
these these things are insane. It's, look at me. I'm literally just spamming heals into the tank. In an emergency, these forks are all CCable. So notice what we do here. We pull it into the corner. We ring of peace. And then now all the forks are being knocked away. Once the ring of peace is over, I use shining force on the tank. It knocks them away and it slows them. So And now they jump out. And when you're in this situation, you just want to buy as much time for the tank as you can. So even though that was really scary and these things are hella overtuned, we played this uh, pretty well. So now the back area. Uh, this is an area that you don't see a lot of people go. And the reason is because right here on the floor and some of the areas inside, it's very easy to bug and either knock mobs or pull stuff through the floor. It seems like they've been trying to fix it over time, but ever even since Legion, this is a problem. If you want to do this pull, this is the way that you have to do it. You have to pull all the mobs out and you have to only fight them on this, this left side of the stage right here. You do not want to fight them on the right side of the stage looking at the door or it will, uh, it will pull stuff through the floor. So this, this mob right here, the Phantom Crew, will put the spotlight on the ground. The spotlight gives you a damage increase. So the way that we do this pack, right, we have all these understudies, then one crew, and the crew uses the spotlight, our DPS stand in it, and then they blast. This stuff hurts the tank pretty bad, so you have to be careful. Uh, very, very careful here. But this can be a pretty valuable uh, count pull. Not a whole lot to say about it. Definitely chaotic on Sanguine, as you see here, but... Uh, so the reason that you would want to do, so you may wonder why the heck would you ever want to do that pull? Uh, in pugs, it's totally fine to just die right here and move on. However, the main reason you would want to do that pull is because Zolgamux is behind it. And Zolgamux will give you three stacks, which can be useful on the harder bosses later in the dungeon. And also is usually a pretty reasonable count. It's a little annoying to pull Zolgamux this late into the dungeon, but hey, what can you do? Um, so we, after we do that pull, we get Zolgamux, we pull them out, we get our stacks, and this area will be a little bit chaotic. The camera in here is really bad. So this is the next area behind the stage. I'll, I'll kind of show us walking through it. So this is the backstage area. There was one more understudy. Uh, this Zolgamux was right here. We just dragged this guy into the next pull. So these backup singers use a Firelands portal cast, I believe. One of the mobs in here does the Firelands portal. You literally can't... This is a very scary area because there's an infiltrator in this pull and your camera is really bad. I would recommend probably pugs just either death skip and go back to the start and go over to go over to Moroz. This is not an area that's pug friendly, I would say. You can do it if you want to, but you can see how the camera's messed up. Our tank's getting blasted. There are, there are casts everywhere. This is like just an absolute danger area. And so I probably wouldn't recommend doing this in pugs, but again, we wanted to collect all these buffs and also it's not so bad for routing. So when you go backstage, you end up now, uh, well, in the front of the stage for, for lack of a better way to explain it. Uh, these mobs just hit the tank. They don't do very much. Uh, there's more infiltrators here. This is generally pretty good count that you can do too. Also, it's very fun. I'm doing 33k DPS, spamming Holy Nova and Reservoir. Not a whole lot to say about this area. Um, we do another pull, so we split this into two. So there are these Usher mobs. They've actually they've actually changed these mobs, so they give more count. They have less health, and there uh, there's less of them here. I'm almost positive that this stuff is going to be good and worth pulling. The question is just, is it worth it going over here and doing this stuff? I'm fairly certain that these Ushers are pretty good count to pull now. That there's only three or four of them over there. The way that you deal with these is you line of sight when they use flashlight. The mechanic is supposed to be you look away for the flashlight, but it still does very heavy AoE damage. But at this point, this was before the nerf, and we just said, look, it's literally not even worth fighting these. We're going, and we just use our dungeon portal and go back to the start. And if you wanted to do this, either die and go back to the start or use your dungeon portal and go back to the start, even right after the first boss. That's what a lot of pugs are gonna do. Kill the first boss and then come here. All right, so generally speaking, the next pull that you do is going to be in this area somewhere, um, jumping off somewhere. You can jump off here. That's kind of the safer route. But if you have an organized group, you can just jump right down into Moreau's room and do the pulls. These mobs don't do a whole lot. There's swirlies and stuff going on. Um, this Arcane Warden has also been nerfed. The AoE damage that it does is reduced, and it gives more count. Very likely that you'll want to pull all of these, uh, in a pug especially. 
in Arky that we were doing, uh, that mob would just one shot you. And it was like, we also have the coordination to do the boss while skipping it. So we just decided to skip it. Uh, there's one scary mob that you have to look out for in this room. It's the skeletal waiter has a lot of health, does a lot of damage. It debuffs the tank and this mob will patrol everywhere. It like goes down into the kitchen. It comes all the way out here into the dining room. So be very careful of this waiter and be like, <laughs> like, it's just so ridiculous how much damage some of this stuff does. Uh, the last thing you have to worry about is these phantom guests that do searing something searing pain this does a lot of damage so you want to have as much control over this as you can i think unfortunately with the waiter and how like we just pulled a little bit too dangerously here uh everything is so packed together that it happens sometimes you just sometimes you just pull too much one thing to note about lower guys okay don't just leave after you wipe one time lower has a massive timer and the bosses especially on fortified do not take that long so we're literally in a plus 27 and we just wipe and we're just like yeah whatever let's just run back it's very quick to get back to where you need to like depending on which way you're going there is plenty of time to finish the key and lower especially in like you know a lower pug or whatever so now we reconvene uh our tank is getting blasted but um we we managed to live you can see how much ridiculous hp this one waiter has it still has a million while everything else is dead. Okay, so I'm not going to go into super depth on all of these different guys just because there's multiple mobs here. They do lots and lots of different stuff. Uh, it's just going to be mechanic overload. I'll just go over the basics. In this room, there's two traps. You can use the traps to CC uh, the friends of Moroz. You want to CC at least two of them at the start of the fight. You can po potentially CC three and do them one at a time. So we're opting to CC two and then do two at once. This is mainly uh, because we have lust in all of our cooldowns and these guys are just going to blow up. Generally speaking, a mob that you want to get in first and kill with lust right away is Crispin Ferens. This mob has one of the most ridiculous frontals that happens so fast and you need this mob dead that you'll see. Um, we'll, we'll show the frontal and then I'll rewind a second. Um, so here's the frontal right here. Watch this. This is how big it is. It goes all the way there. <laughs> like, I still can't even get out of it. Uh, so the way that you want to deal with this frontal is be very close to this mob because it comes out as a cone, right? The frontal comes out as a cone, and so you need to be as close to him as you can so that you can get out of it. And uh, yeah, some sort of a blunder for me there. But uh, one thing to note is that you can interrupt the frontal with displacement. Not stuns, but displacement. So for instance, watch here, we use Ring of Peace, and Ring of Peace knocks that frontal because uh, our, our Warlock was in kind of a bad spot there and he was blasting, so we just Ring of Peace that. If you have a Blood DK, you can keep gripping it over and over again, which is real good. Uh, so we just blast down those mobs. So the other main mechanic of Moroz that you have to worry about is the bleed. Moroz will do this bleed, he'll cast a Vanish, and he'll stun somebody at random. There are very, very nasty overlaps with the stuns where you just instantly die. So you have to be careful. If the healer does not have the bleed, it will always target the healer. You will always get the first bleed here every single time as a healer. So if you want to pre-use a defensive or whatever, that's a great time to do it. You can use this to your advantage if you play Paladin. So let's say you're playing Holy Paladin and you get the bleed, right? You can wait till the next bleed. Then you can bubble or bop yourself. It removes the bleed, and then he tries to bleed you again, and then you get that one also. So you can actually double remove bleeds twice as a paladin because you know that it's going to go on you. Um, I guess technically you could do it as any paladin, but you're going to need to use it on the healer. Uh, use your bop or whatever. Okay, so once you lust and kill the first two, now you just drag these in one at a time. Uh, these, I, bu I believe, Berry Buck is a caster. I, I don't even remember what this does. So we just drag the one caster mob in. You can re-CC these guys with anything. I'm using Shackle Undead as a priest. Having priest is very good here. You can also use um, uh, Trap from Hunter or Para or whatever. Clea, if you play Kyrian Priest, the Clea Soulbind, you can use it to remove two different bleeds. The problem is Clea is annoying and not good for anything else, but if you're worried about this boss on a Tyrant, especially in a Pug, using Clea Soulbind here can be really good on any healer. It doesn't have to be priest, right? You can do it as a resto shaman. You can do it as a, you know, whatever, uh, whatever you have Kyrian on. So Druger is, I would say, like one of the most lethal to overlap with things. 
You ne almost never want to do Druger with anybody else because of this Iron Whirlwind. He's going to jump and he's going to spin. It's going to pulse AoE damage and it's going to do a lot of damage if he's on you. So if there's like, see how he'll do this. If there's any other guy doing stuff, distracting you during this, this will just instantly kill you basically. So doing, doing Druger by himself and like just fully focusing on him is the uh, most, I would say safest way. Doing Crispin when you have damage and lust, doing Druger when you're paying attention. Never doing those two together. Um, then the rest of the fight is just basically an HPS check. Dwarf Racial is very, very good. You see, I'm sure you guys and your pugs are doing twice of the amount of healing that I am doing because we can very easily bop, bubble, dwarf, everything, all of the bleeds. The bleed has since been nerfed. It only lasts one minute, which is nice. Keep that in mind. Um, yeah, this is me being a dummy and I pull the Arcane Warden. So one thing here, I'm actually kind of proud of myself for this. This was a pretty good moment is I actually run away. So generally your first instinct when you pull a mob like this is to run into your team and like get away to get to your tank and get help. But I actually thought that the warden wouldn't aggro to anyone else and my team could finish off the boss without me. And then I completely trolled and not only ran the arcane warden into my team, but then also am an angel and I'm out of range of my tank. Um, so this is floor POV and we kill the boss. Yep. So play with the prop paladin guys. That's the lesson. Okay. So now we go back here. This is the other alternative route. Now this is the exact same way back here through this door. When you, when you start, you're going left. So this way following this carpet was morose, the room we jumped into last. And now this way is the intersection between, um, huntsman and maiden. So down the stairs is huntsman up the stairs is maiden. I don't know which. What happened here? Okay, so... <laughs> searing... Kick Searing Pain. Okay. So now we're in... Now we go to the horse area. These horses are uh, dangerous. You can see here that we're, our tank doesn't have any cooldowns up. And we're going for the legendary just pull one horse until we can get cooldowns up. And now we're ready. So now we pull multiple. This can be a pretty dangerous pull. This is five chargers. This is kind of giga chad. These guys actually hurt real bad. The main, the, so the two mechanics of these mobs, number one, they charge at the tank and it creates a line. And the way Drogo's tanking this is he's being buried into the corner. If the mobs are right next to you and you're buried into the corner, they're not going to charge anywhere. They're just going to do it in place, right? The other thing is there's a cast that the mobs have. I think it's called trampling stomp that does group damage. This one right there, you need to kick that or stun that or do whatever to it. You can stun it and it will not recast. So this is doing these pulls. It's a really, really good situation to use your AOE stops. Fear works on a priest, leg sweep, anything. Any sort of AOE stops that you have, uh, you want to be using them. Chaos ensues here because of Sanguine. Uh, we unfor This is just so tough to be tanking with Sanguine. This is just such a ridiculous pack. This is going to be so much easier on any other week. Um, so our, our tank runs out there. The last mechanic you need to know about this area is these flame circles. It puts flame circles on people. The damage that it does to you is very insignificant. However, if anyone else goes into the circle, they basically just die. I don't know exactly how it works, but I mean, it one shot me in a key earlier today when someone just like walked into me a little bit. So you need to be spread here. And again, using the tank in the corner so that the charge doesn't go anywhere strat is really, really good. And so now we're just going through this area. You don't want to pull too many of these mobs because you have to worry about stopping all these and also your tank needs to live. So you can see we're just pulling moderately here. We're not pulling like one or two mobs, but you know, I think four to five is a safe range depending on how giga chad your tank is. In a low key, you might be able to do more, but um, so yeah, we're just same thing. Most of these mobs are the same, four mobs, five mobs, infiltrator. Okay, so now we have uh, Huntsman. This boss has been giga nerfed as well. Still is can be pretty challenging. So there's a couple mechanics. You'll see a mechanic here that's been deleted. Um, basically, they had a dispel mechanic. We won't even talk about it because that mechanic doesn't exist anymore. Was just not very pug friendly. And I'm sure they're working on Dragonflight stuff and they don't have time to redesign boss mechanics. Um, the boss will stomp. If your brain is tiny like me, this stomp will interrupt you every single time. I don't know, it just randomly stomps like this this amount of time into the fight and it'll always kick you. Um, so the way it works, this boss has two phases. When he's on the horse, he doesn't really do much. He just kind of sits there. 
he'll spawn some like some stuff to dodge once you get the horse to half then the huntsman jumps off and this is where you want to do is use your dps cooldowns so you'll see this is where our warlock drops infernal we pop our bloodlust our mage combusts this is our big cooldowns because there's a burn phase and then the huntsman is going to go back on the horse and the horse is going to full heal during this the horse is going to jump around and he's going to do cones around the room if you are generally speaking it's easy to dodge these cones if you're standing near the horse you either want to be near the horse or very far away so you can see what we do is range is we just get the hell way away and then the melee kind of stand close to the horse so there's two things that the boss will do now the boss has mortal strike and uh shared suffering uh mortal strike is i think it reduces max health it do, it's a huge cleave that does a bunch of damage and reduces max health i believe so you need to not be near the tank you need to not be near the tank during this mortal strike also knowing if you got hit by the mortal strike affects how you play the next mechanic the next mechanic is shared suffering this is a circle around the boss and it will do damage equal to like basically it'll split the damage to everyone in there right the problem is it's very chaotic to go in and out of this shared suffering because you have this dumb horse running around right so imagine these ranged dps players actually having to go in and do mechanics and deal with the shared suffering right like they're not going to do it they're look, look at this guy you think this guy does mechanics so what you do is generally you manage immunities with either like cheat deaths or um gs uh tuft is a good trinket that's really useful here so uh, you can bubble basically you want to manage the shared suffering if you're in a pug i you probably are just gonna have to tank it you're just gonna have to have everyone soak it but it'll get chaotic quickly i was in a pug earlier that decided they needed to soak the shared suffering the problem is they decided to soak the mortal strike and it just instantly one shot all three of my dps and then the key was depleted so that's like it can be very difficult to to try and do the mechanic on this fight that's why you see a lot of higher level groups trying to cheese it and then the fight repeats uh then the the boss goes back on the horse it's going to summon these walls notice the walls are always like this 25 to 30 yard ish range from the boss one thing i try and do as a priest is i watch my chastise and i try and be out of range of chastise but in range of all my other spells that's how i know i'm going to be far enough away that the the uh walls won't hit me and, and as a tank, you have to be careful on this boss to not drag the boss too much. You want to be trying to dodge the walls, but the problem is if Drogo drags the boss towards us, then a wall can spawn right here because we're trying to outrange the wall. Hopefully that makes sense. People are talking about moving out of the shared suffering. My understanding of the way shared suffering works is if you run out of it and the cast doesn't resolve, it'll just keep recasting. So let's say you're playing like a Giga Mobile tank, like a, a DH or whatever. I bet you could probably just cheese the whole phase and just run around over and over again. Like for example, you just leap one, boss runs over to you, you leap another one, like the boss runs over to you, you get gripped, and then like eventually you could skip it. But if you run out of the shared suffering, it's gonna recast. And in a pug, chances are you're just going to get your melee killed trying to dodge it. So I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Oh, I forgot about the most important mechanic. I can't believe I forgot this. I bet every melee DPS in the chat has died to this mechanic. How many of you guys have died to this one? So the very first phase, the Huntsman goes down. You burn the boss. Okay. When the after only the very first burn phase, the boss turns purple and just decides that he doesn't care about threat. There's no aggro, there's no anything. He's just gonna run around and just hit whatever he wants. Even though he's a boss and you taunted him, he's just gonna melee whoever is near whoever is near him. So this is like I don't know if it's a mechanic or what, but after the first burn phase, like watch what happens, watch what flawless does here. So flawless is blasting. All right, he's out of like he's just standing there looking at, look at him he's just running around like <laughs> he's like nope nope i'm just out of over here I'm, I'm over here and then eventually the boss goes unpurple oh they removed it okay if they removed it then uh that's good then ignore what i said this will just be a great part of history then okay so now we've finished the huntsman in this route we decided to not do any of the trash upstairs upstairs trash is i think pretty good count actually and some of that stuff has been nerfed so if you didn't do any of the weird stuff that we did like uh the backstage stuff that's stuff that you may want to consider pulling 
so now back here so now we're heading towards maiden uh this is my, again the same area that we jumped off with with morose the same area where we jumped off with to go to huntsman and we're going to i believe invis skip through this whole room and i'm a little i don't remember what was happening if i was talking to my oh no did my belt fail or something what am i even doing here all right well let's let's ignore this so the reason that this room is a little bit annoying is because it doesn't have that much count and there's a lot of casters in here. So these retainers have pretty dangerous casts. There's a big damage cast and there's also a heal. I think they have a mind control cast too. Either way, there's a lot of annoying casters in this room. Um, so we skip this. This isn't a bad area to do. If you're in a pug, I probably wouldn't invis skip this. What you can do is just tag a couple mobs bring him line of sight him down here that's how i would pull this room in a pug just walk up tag bring down line of sight and just do that rinse repeat until the room's clear um now we're upstairs and now we need to make our way to the maiden this trash i would say is not super valuable count uh this stuff is okay but as you get into this hallway these mobs tend to get pretty dangerous so you're not super excited about pulling those so we're gonna try and skip as many as we can uh, again, a lot of the mobs we've seen before, uh, the servants, the retainers, not a lot of super important mechanics here. So if you're still unsure about how Kara works, right, I'm going to show you a little bit. So we have the room where we jumped down where Morose was, right? So there was the go left at the start and there was jump down and there was Morose and then go down to the Huntsman. So if you look up here, this is where we did the deaths or where we did the TP out slash death skip. Um, this is outside of the stage. You can't quite see it, but this is the hallway to the stage. So if for whatever reason you decided to just keep pushing through that way where we jumped out, you end up here, right? So what you could do is after the stage, just come here, kill this stuff, go to May and then go downstairs and then you're at Moreau's and, and Huntsman. We do kind of some weird stuff, but if you're wondering where the heck you are when you come out of the stage area, that's where you are is right here in this, uh, this upper area where Maiden is to the right. Okay, so we invis skip through this whole hallway. Honestly, this hallway isn't super bad. The reason is this lady right here is an infiltrator, uh, so you get stats here. Also, there's two infiltrators in this room that are very, very good to get. So don't feel bad about pulling some of this stuff. It's not ideal, but it's okay. So what we do is we're going to do these two infiltrators, I think, um, before the boss. Oh, looks like we, I think we accidentally pull too much stuff. I don't, rem I don't know exactly how to pull this stuff. There's a specific way that you have to pull these infiltrators to get them out and not pull anything else with them. It might be like a certain angle or something, but um, yeah, so we pull way too much stuff here. This is not what we wanted. We only wanted these two infiltrators and maybe like one or two other mobs, but we fight them. Um, these mobs, like they just have a lot of weird stuff. There's a fear that you have to kick. There's a like a mob that transforms there's like these these sentries are archers essentially yeah again there's just so much trash in this dungeon that i'm not going to go through like every mechanic of everything but if you know if you really feel inclined to can spend some time in mdt and read everything i think everything's updated now so we kill all this stuff and then on to maiden so maiden is like sort of another phase boss where you need to hold damage a little bit the first thing you need to know is that maiden shoots these bolts that are sort of like chain lightnings it hits you, and then if anyone's near you, it chains and does increase damage. So everyone needs to be spread out. Uh, you don't need to be Omega spread out. I think it's like eight yards or something. So as long as you're not just clumped up standing together, you won't have any problems. That's this holy bolt right there, that little lightning thing. When you get this puddle, you want to put it on the outside of the room. The puddle gives you a very, very nasty dot. If you ever go in a puddle, so you notice I'll go all the way to the wall to conserve space. Just kicking the boss. This phase is like very, very easy. You're just doing damage. So now the boss uses mass repentance. And what this is going to do is this is going to repent everybody and it, you're going to be CC'd. And the only way to get out of the CC is either some sort of immunity, right? Like bubble or whatever, or to take damage. And ideal situation is that you have a way to take damage. In the MDI, they were using that, uh, that scar trinket or whatever. Probably not everyone's going to be wanting to use that scar trinket or the jailer trinket or whatever it's called, but there are little ways that you can take damage. So for 
For example, Paladin can use Sack on somebody. So even if, as long as there's one person taking damage, you can Sack them. You can use, yeah, like a Soul Igniter Trinket. As a Priest, this is one of the best ones you can do, is Shadow Word Death. Because the Shadow Word Death damage is delayed, usually about, uh, let's say, 0.5 seconds when the cast is about to go off is when I use Shadow Word Death. You'll get CC'd, and then you'll get broken out of it by the damage. These dots, whatever this fire dot is called, is insane how much damage your team is gonna take from these. So as a healer, you're very tempted to wanna do damage and try and break the shield. This is not the time to do damage as a healer. You are playing ultimate whack-a-mole in this stage. As if, if a lot of your team has, uh, has the debuffs, you need to play ultimate whack-a-mole here. And... That's it. That's the whole fight. So as, as a healer, generally you want to try and find ways to not have to take the debuff. In a coordinated group, you can also spread out things. So for example, uh, when you have Bloodlust, yeah, no one needs to use really that heavy of a defensive. And then maybe if you're dry, maybe have the mage use block or the rogue use cloak or something to get rid of the debuff so that you only have like two or three people to heal at most. Um, so you can see here, Zyro blocks this one, and Mooch has walls and Flawless diffuses. And so now uh, I have less people to heal. Uh, and also I have Apoth for this too, which is fine. And then we're going to have Lust for this. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole fight. That's pretty much the whole fight. You missed it? Oh, we'll, don't worry, we'll miss it. We'll miss it, it's fine. That's, that's, that's for someone to dig through the VOD another day. Can you mass dispel it? No, it is not a magic debuff. You can see here my frames will change color if it's dispellable, and it's not dispellable. It's just like a, uh, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, a debuff, I guess, only a debuff. Uh, another thing that uh, JSMX mentioned is another thing you can do is take the debuff very early. So for example, one thing you'll note that we, or you'll notice that we do is Here's the mass repent and everyone sort of runs in at the same time. But hypothetically, if everyone, if someone went in very, very early and their deep, their, um, their thing was expiring right as it happened, it would sort of smooth out the damage if that makes sense, right? Like instead of three people having the dot, it would be one person and then two people or whatever. Finding the horse's stomp in the last phase of Huntsman. Yeah, that's actually a great tip too. So uh, that pretty much goes over the main stuff. To, so to cover that, we can try and get to that part. I, one thing I forgot to mention is the end phase of Huntsman. Uh, once you kill Huntsman, the horse kind of goes nuts and does this mighty stomp over and over again, which does a lot of damage. There's two things that you can do to deal with it. Number one is line of sight. So you see Drogo tanks the boss by this wall, and then you can just line of sight it there. Another thing is you can outrange it. It has, it's only like 30 yards, I think. And so you can see that all of the range players are just out here. And then a melee player can either use a defensive or use the wall, the line of sight. And that's a good tip for this stomp too, if you're doing a, like a tyrannical or a hard key. But yeah, that wraps up the, uh, the lower review. This dungeon should be quite a bit easier now that um, they've made a lot of nerfs to it. This was, this was us doing it on a hard week. This is us doing it on a pretty fucking hard week.